Hello and welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. Today I want to share with you the first part of an HR KPI's mega file that I'm building. This is going to be the first part of a series of I'm not sure exactly how many videos, but this is definitely the first one. So today I'm going to share with you this part, which is going to show the headcount of your um, company. Uh, metrics that are related to the number of workers, the percentage of male, female, percentage of managers, how many did you hire in the last 12 months, things like that. And of course, you can take this and fine tune it to fit your exact needs and your exact metrics. So what's the layout of the file? There's a dashboard that you're currently looking at. There are There is a, a sheet called Lists where you maintain some information that's going to help us populate everything else. There's a headcount database, which is the back end of that dashboard that we saw. And there's a worker data, which is the database where you fill in the information that feeds the headcount and eventually the dashboard. So what do we have in the dashboard? On top, we have an ability to select a certain date to show us the last date or the last column over here or basically all of these are showing that dates information so if I change that to mid-May all the information is going to change and you can see the chart is going to update 12 months back uh, June through May um, it's always good to have the last day of the month um, just so you have um, you know uh, a clear review of the information so that's the first part. It's the date. It affects all of the KPIs that you see over here. Department, you can select all departments or one in specific department and you see the information immediately changes. Going from HR to sales to the software department, everything changes according to what you select. Um, it's a good place to put your company logo over here. It looks very nice. and um, that's pretty much it now let's see how everything is built let's go to the list lists uh, sheet in the list sheet there are a few tables Excel tables and I recommend you use Excel table um, because it's very helpful I have one table called position department and position type where you key in the positions in your company I'm simulating a software company so I have three departments software sales and HR and in each department, I have different positions. Some of them are leaders, some of them are developers, or sales team and managers, etc., etc. So this is really up to you. But it's best to define this once, so you can use that as drop-down selections. Then each department for each position and the position type, if it's a manager or worker. Now, I used a table because then I can reference a range. You see I have a range called position which is actually um, all the rows in the table. In the table, If I add another row then that range will change automatically. Then I have a gender male, female and other. Again this is also um, a range. And employment type. This is also a range called type. So we have three different data that we need to fill in and that's going to allow us to input information in a very um, closed manner so there's no mistakes and no nobody enters something that's not supposed to be there there's a department list over here which is basically where you select this is the drop down list for the selection of the department i have the first one is all so that's all departments and then i have i'm using um, the array uh, functions in excel unique and sort basically on the, the uh, table so that's going to give me an alphabet, alphabetical order, the departments over there. So this is the list section. The age range and group, uh, range group, that's what I'm going to use later for the part two, where I'm going to show you the diversity uh, dashboard. So now to the worker data. Let's take a look at the table. This is also a table. We have the name of the employee, the position. So this is the first drop-down list. Okay. 
and it's only from the uh, lists. If you're not familiar how to do this, just select the entire table, go to data, all the rows in that table, click on this icon data validation. It's going to be on any value by default, so you got to go to list. And as you see, you write equals the name of the range, position. And now it's going to reference that list. And if I if I have here empty lines and I have everything that al already exists but all of a sudden I want to add another position let's call it test then you will see that I automatically get that over here the best way to delete is just to click right click on whatever you want to delete and then table rows that's the best way to handle the pivot the uh, tables so you you fill in the positions now the blue columns are the ones that you need to fill out orange are the ones that are formula based so as you can imagine department and position type are simple vlookups that are pulling those two columns over here you can you need to fill in the gender again this is the drop down list I'm not going to show again how to do that start date and last date and just leave that empty if that employee is still working. Then there's some information that I'm going to use for the diversity database, the dashboard, sorry, the date of birth, the country, the employment type. Um, these are just examples, of course, and we'll talk about that further in the uh, uh, next video. Then I have a lot of um, orange columns, which are formula columns. So first of all, I'm looking to check if that person worked during the last month selected because I want to be able to filter only the lines in the dashboard. This, these metrics are for the last date or the last month. So I'm basically looking to see if, the, if that date is between the end date, which is this one, and the start date. Okay, so the start date is keyed in. The end date is basically checking if there is any value here. If there's no value, I'm just gonna use today meaning the person is still working there otherwise I'm going to use that information so that is this column the department filter what this is doing basically it's checking if I have here the name all I want every everyone to be selected so the way to do it is to just have this simple if if that value is all give it the name all otherwise use the department name so when I select HR these are showing their real departments and if I select all they're all gonna show all that makes it very easy for me to pull their information the filter for pivots that's gonna be used later but just to show you it's basically a filter for pivot tables so again I'm looking if this value is equal to this value then I'm gonna give it a yes otherwise a no and for example, if I select HR, so I don't want to see software lines. And that's why I'm going to use that. Age is basically the age of the date of birth versus today. The difference divided by the number of days per year. And I'm rounding down so I have a nice round number. Age group, this is where I'm using this age range. Okay, I want to, you know, bucket the, the range of the years. I don't want to have too many... Uh, values for the age because everyone has a different age so I'm just gonna bucket it between four different sections you know 0 to 25 25 through 45 45 55 55 plus and I'm gonna use VLOOKUP with the uh, one uh, at the end which gives us um, uh, give us this uh, close match sorted so that's why you see 30 is between 25 and 45 that's why you probably you also need to Make sure that this range is sorted. Ascending, otherwise it's not going to work. All right, so this is the age group. We talked about the end date and the hired month. This is also something I'm going to be using. So um, I'm just going to use the start date and give it the last day of the month. So I'll be able to use that uh, later on as a fixed number because I don't want to have 
too many dates. You see, if I have two dates for July, um, I want it to show only one date. Otherwise, it's a mess. Okay, so these are the input and formula sheet. Going back to headcount database is where the magic happens. So I'm going to pull the last date. Here you see it's equal to this. And then I'm just going to go back um, using this formula. And I'm not, not using e date because if I have a um, not the end of the month, well, it's in any case, it's not going to work because, you know, February and all of that, that's going to, once you have February at 28, the month before that is going to show January 28, which is not what I want to show. So I'm just going to use date uh, and minus one. So what I'm back actually doing, I'm using the date of the month before. Same year, same month, just the first day of the month. And minus one gives me, without any doubt, the last day of the previous month. I'm going to do that for 12 months out. Now, all the formulas here are basically pulling in different metrics. Number of workers, I'm using count ifs, and I'm trying to see if the start date and the end date are between uh, this number. So I want to see all the people that worked or were working between, um, uh, you know, at, at that date, meaning they started before August and were still active uh, on the last day of August. Same thing for managers, only this, I'm also adding this uh, position type. So I only want to see, you know, um, position type equals manager. Okay. And I also have a filter for the department. So you see the department has to be equal to this. So, and I'm using this trick all, all along. Same here with the, with the, uh, here it's for the gender, so I have male, female, and other. Here I have uh, a combination of both, so it's position type manager plus um, table gender equal male. So if you're not familiar with count ifs, it's very useful. You just can, you know, you can just uh, put whatever you want, how many, how many um, care, um, parameters you want. So I'm going to use count ifs just to show you. And if I want to reference a certain table, it's very easy. I can start typing in the table. In this case, mine is table one. I click on the tab, okay? Then I open the bracket and I look for a certain name. So I could be uh, gender, double click on gender, gender, close the bracket, comma, and then the value. So I'm going to say male. And that's just going to give me right now all the lines where the gender equals male. So I'm just using the, those that trick count ifs all along with a lot of parameters. Um, so, so that's why it's very easy to use the table uh, for this purpose. Same for female and other managers hired during the month. This is where I am using uh, the hired month column that we saw earlier. And I just added one here for hired a male. Of course, you could do that for male and female and everything. Over here on the right, basically you see I've got um, numbers and texts and everything. And what I did, I created um, you know, uh, boxes and referenced the text. So if I click on, double click on here, you see this one references headcount M1. So this is basically whatever's written here, if I change it to test, it's going to show over here as test. Okay, and this is very useful if you want to build dynamic dashboards. Now you see that the values, I'm basically taking the last month that I've selected and the specific values plus some text. And I could also use this to show percentages. I'm going to multiply the value. I'm looking for the number of males uh, from the entire workforce. We're going to multiply by 100 to get a percentage number, but then I'm going to round it so I don't have a, um, you know, 25 point something something, and I'm going to add the percentage icon. So that's what I'm doing here for all of the percentages. And if it's a number, I can use like some, so you can do whatever you want. Uh, and it's very useful. All you need to do is reference, oops, sorry, 
let me show you how to do it even very simply so you can create a shape and here it's going to be equal to M1 so you see that one is referencing uh, M1 with the colors and you know for the nice graphics with the two colors is what we call gradient all you need to do is click format shape and you select gradient fill and this is where you need to be creative and you know design however you want to see it fit but you got to select two colors uh, you could go one is blue one is purple for example and you get two different type of colors of course you can play with this you could have three colors and this is how this is actually built so essentially I created two let's say boxes one and I just use now copy and paste so one is for the headline or for the header sorry and the other could be the value itself and now every time this change this changes the data will change as well so that's um, all of these boxes that's how they're built okay so it's very useful once you change that everything changes and the chart is just a simple chart you just have a simple chart for uh, the date and the number of workers for this example nothing fancy over here the chart type I used a uh, 3d clustered column but you can do whatever you want whatever colors you want I had the black uh, design over here I don't think it's that one I think it's this one um, and yeah so that's the first part of this mega HR KPIs file I will be working on the other steps um, and uh, sharing with you more KPIs relating to diversity and recruitment and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I recommend that you try building this. So it'll be a good exercise for you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, subscribe and leave a comment so I know that you liked it. Take care.